Water, of course, remains water, but its structure, like a nervous system, reacts to any irritation. Modern instruments have made it possible to record the fact that within each of water's memory cells, there are 440,000 information panels, each of which is responsible for its own type of interaction with the environment. If you consider a cluster as a group of specific molecules, um, then it can survive only a short amount of time. But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. The stability of the cluster structures confirmed the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, that it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water and you must make a sentence out of water and you can change the sentence. I hoped to show people that water could have a memory. Dr. Imato's laboratory does research on water samples which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. A major part of our, our, brain, of our brains are water. So the water and the easy movement of the water molecules and so on will leave part of that imprint. So yes, to some extent, the water is implicated in the patterning of the information in the brain. Now when you look at organs, say the heart, or the lung, or muscles, or the brain, then all that you can see in a simple NMR experiment is the water in these organs. The water, your head is full of water. There is nothing else but water, almost. Let us see how this type of water affects human blood. The doctor is drawing blood from a patient's finger. Using a special microscope, we shall be able to see the condition of her body from this drop. These are red blood cells, and they've lost their electrical charge, so they're all stuck together in a formation called a rouleau. Here's a huge symplast. Symplasts are associated with heart disease, and uh, arthritis, and lung disease and many other conditions that could be coming in the future. The doctor asks the patient to drink a small amount of structurized water. After 12 minutes, the doctor again draws blood from the patient and studies it. So you can see that the cells then become buoyant, they become slippery, and they have their electrical charge, so they repel each other. That allows them to carry oxygen, and it means that we're changing the pH of the blood back to an aerobic environment rather than an anaerobic environment. I think that's utterly amazing that, that, a water could, that just drinking water could do that. 